Welcome back to another Talk Dragon Tuesday with RPW. Now today we're going to be going over the Temple Raid and my review of it, some things that I liked, some things that I'd like to see change, and so forth. Now with this, this will be a post-event review, and I hope you guys like my new little um, logo I've created for that. Um, but anyways, before we get into the Temple Raid today and the review on that, um, we aren't going to have a special guest. Instead, we are going to be talking about something specifically that happened on my channel that I need to address. Um, and before we address it, before we go into details, I do want to apologize to anyone and everyone and let you know that this doesn't mean that there's going to be a continuing set of drama or craziness here on my channel because there are some big changes coming to prevent that. So before I jump into this, I just want to let everyone know that it could get drug out just a little bit more than I anticipated. I did make some imagery to keep myself on topic, but I don't want to edit my video um, voiceover any at all during that so that you guys can actually hear everything raw and in detail as I go through it. Um, anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. Now, before I get into today's video, I wanna put out a public apology to not only Ghost Rider and his team, the Yin Yang Warriors, for accidentally mentioning the word ghost, but some other things that happened on my channel as well. Um, and I'm really gonna go through this so that you guys know it was not my intentions to hurt anyone, and I'm not upset with anything or anyone, even in Atlas. That is, I think people are taking me wrong. But when I did my first video, it wasn't about me being upset. It was about me, you know, getting other messages from other platinum teams that were having issues. And I thought, well, what's the best way to do this than to give my story of something that could have been, you know, yeah, that just seemed a little weird, some things that had happened. But as I said, even in that video, that I had no proof that this was their intentions. I didn't know what their intentions were, but that it felt a little weird. Now, in that video I did, here is screenshots of the script that I made. Like literally, I made a script and I was doing my attacks and I'm reading off the script and that's why I would die pretty often and somebody else would come in and back me and then of course, I wasn't even following them in there because I was so busy trying to read off the script and not make a mistake and slip up and say anyone on his team's name. But I did and I didn't know that I did until it was way too late. So. I think it was like the next morning I get up and I'm talking to somebody online and somebody hits me up and they were like, hey, do you realize that you said ghost? And I'm like, no. They were like, yeah, you slipped up the word ghost. I'm like, holy crap that I, I didn't even realize because I didn't listen to my own video. So I hurried up and jumped in and I agreed to delete that thing immediately because I really didn't want anyone to be called out on that. And that's the reason I said I wasn't going to use he's or she's or names or anything. So with that being said, um, I did end up getting some more intel after that where they were going to take our castles. So I knew that this was coming. I was trying not to go too crazy with castle upgrades because I was like, yeah, we're probably going to have to move. So when they come, they come, right? Now, this isn't their team, mind you. This is other people in other chats that are upset with me for what was said. Now, that's why when they did come over to our castle, the other team that did, which I'm not going to state their name, we treated it as a party. Now, because of these issues, because it caused some problems out there, I will no longer be doing live streams that include stressful situations for my team or for other people, including things in Atlas, wars, even things like farming and PVPs. So that is one way I'm going to fix this issue. Now, let's address the issue behind each game or each video I did. So that way you know what they were for. The first one was because, you know, I wanted other teams to know that there was an issue out there. And I did say I can't prove their intentions. The second one, which was the Timber video, was simply for you guys to see how other teams take your castle. So we would be prepared for it. Now, the other night I received information that someone actually posted a statement that I had called someone a pedophile, which I would never ever do and that um, of course I um, was only doing this to make profit so let's efface the profit thing first let's let's go ahead and jump into that let's go ahead and look at my channel I'm opening it up for all of you to see here I do not make any money on this channel if you'll notice monetization at this time is not even activated because well number one I don't have enough people Number two, you're going to see literally no money I have made since I've started this channel. 
Nobody's donated money to me. Nobody's given me money. In fact, I've spent way, 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 way more money than I should have in this channel so that I could help everybody else because that's what I love about this game is helping all of you. I have spent far more money in this game um, on YouTube wise than I have on my own personal gaming between trying to get my internet together, my, you know, my stuff together. That is not, please know that's not what those videos were for. Now, that means I have made zero revenue off of any of these things that were said. But I do want to show you, I've also made zero subscribers from those. You know, those videos were not for me to go out and try to get bigger. You know, the videos that I do that I put a lot of time and effort into, the things that take me several hours, like this one, is Talk Dragon Tuesday. So if you'll notice here, just this last Talk Dragon Tuesday, I jumped up by 40 some people. Now, as for him saying that I called someone a pedophile, in the video when I was live, someone had typed, I'm going to hit this player, or, uh, when I said, I'm going to hit this player, someone had posted this down here, you'll see, I'm going to um, create a YouTube channel and convince everyone that he is a child molester. Now, notice that just a few seconds later, I had actually entered something. I did not realize what he said because I was in the middle of many, many things at the time. Because I was live, I had, of course, live stream chat going on on something else and so forth. But why didn't I address it? Well, that's part of it. You know, the fact that I was multitasking, I had the iPad on, you know, with the chat, I had my husband next to me with texts coming in. And then, of course, you know, I am a multitasker. That's all there is to it. But my husband did, a few minutes later, bring it to my attention. He, he poked at me and he showed me and he gives me these big eyes like, dude, this just showed up in your chat because, you know, of course, it's delayed. And I'm looking down at my screen and I'm seeing that the delay is different. You know what I'm saying? The delay is, you know, I'm like, well, there's nothing showing now, so I don't want to bring any attention to it. So that's what I opted you to do was not deal with it until afterwards so that I wouldn't bring attention to it. Now, I went through and I tried to keep the video going and chit-chatting. And by the time it was the end of the video, it was like nighttime. I was like ready for bed. I jumped in bed and I didn't even think about staying up and, you know, deleting it. I was just like, okay, going to bed. It was a fun night. Got all this glory. But again, I wasn't even upset. That's not what the video was about. Now, I did realize a few minutes later what he said and I reminded the team that whenever I'm live in chat, you know, don't post things like this. So of course, right after he had said that, you know, before I went to bed and all that, I did post in there, if you had seen the video, hey guys, I'm live. Now, this short live stream is only a little bit of what you guys would see going on on my team. I'm actually a really laxed, you know, leader. I'm not, you know, a tyrant. But at the same time, I do not tolerate specific things like that. And I made sure I put that out there. So I put that in there and I hoped that this was going to fix the situation. But again, sorry, my husband just walked in. <clears throat> but again, um, that's the things you guys don't see is the aftermath, the things that I do in order to fix the situation or whatever. Now, I did talk to him afterwards. It was actually the next morning over a call. And during this time, I had told him, look, you cannot do this. This not only can cost you something in the game, but this kind of stuff is what can cost issues for our team. You know, it can cost issues for any alliance that we're a part of. And then, of course, for my channel, you know, which if you're thinking for my channel, you're talking about hundreds of people that watch my channel that are, that are um, you know, low level. Now, I also told him, I said, when live streams are on, you shouldn't talk about people, but not at all, not, not just during live streams, but I do not tolerate chat like this. And he's like, I know, I know, I know. So please know, whenever I talked to him, I was like, look, I'm going to let you get by with it this one time only because I don't think anybody saw it, but, and because I knew that he was just angry and just throwing, you know, out the mouth. But because I didn't think anybody saw it, I thought it would be okay. Especially after he was extremely apologetic. And he told me, he's like, look, I'm so sorry. I didn't know we were live. And he just let the emotions get the best of him and so forth. And I was like, I get it. I get it. 
So I figured since nobody had said anything, nobody had commented on it about it or anything like that, Ghost had never reached out to me, that it had not been seen. So I thought, well, I'll just completely remove the video. Now, again, I did not say these words and I cannot control what's being said in the chat rooms, not just in my team, but you've got league chats, for example. You got alliance chats. So if something pops up there, I can't be held responsible for the things that other people say. However, I can be responsible for what I allow my team to say. And I very much apologize for anyone that this may have hurt. This is not at all, you know, what I intended. Now, once a few days had gone by and I heard nothing about this and I realized, okay, Leah, it's fine. We're good. I let him know. I said, okay, fine. You're fine. But I was going to remove him if for some reason, you know, there was any kind of issues, Ghost had reached out. But I thought, oh, God, we, we bit the bullet on that one. Nobody saw this. Nobody commented. Nobody said anything. We were good. Because again, in that entire video, I wasn't upset. You know what I mean? I wasn't ticked off. I was having fun. I was like, guys, hey, Alliance, bring your uh, Primarchs up here, free glory. You know, come just sit here and grab you some glory. And I was enjoying the fact that I was getting all these chests because I'm too busy between videos and all the other things to even go glory hunting for myself most of the time. So I was like gung-ho about them taking this castle. Besides that, it was one that we were going to, you know, opt to give away anyway. So it wasn't a huge deal to me personally. Now, However, like I said before, you know, a week into it, somebody posts something on the forums. But mind you, what they said was not the full truth. I did not call someone a pedophile and I was not using this platform against other teams. That was not the intention. Now, I did ask him to send out a statement and let you guys know, you know, what he thought. And he did want to send out one that says, Dear Ghost Rider, RPW, PG, and any others that I um, have offended in the War Dragons community. I would like to sincerely apologize to those for my behavior. I know um, I know that no way my actions are excusable. I was unaware that at that point in time that we were even live streaming and I let my anger get the best of me. RPW removed the video immediately and I was severely reprimanded by her. Now what this means is I did go off. Um, yeah. I have also had disciplinary actions taken against me by her and PG, and I would like to ask for forgiveness in this matter, and I have learned my lesson. Now, he is very, very, very sorry. Like, he was so upset when he found out about all this, guys. Now, I would love to personally apologize in person if I could, but first, you know, this is the best I can do. I mean, I could have typed this up and just put it on a forum, but the truth is I'm one that does YouTube videos. So I would like to do this right here and right now. I personally apologize myself to whoever I may have hurt or that may have been affected by this situation. And I need you to know that I in no way condone hate, spe hate speech or slander. I mean, even in my team, we have like rules about that. Like you can't say hate speech, you can't bully, you can't do slander against other people. I mean, you can't even talk about things that lead to that. One of my biggest rules is no politics, no religion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, period. So please know I do not support that kind of behavior, period. Now, I do have an idea of how I'm going to be able to prevent this for in the future. I promise all of you, number one, this will be the last time you have to hear an apology from me. But number two, you will no longer see live streams here on my channel in Atlas, um, at least with my, you know, with my main. If I have an alt that I can take into Atlas for whatever reason and completely have no Primark wanted to map around, then maybe. But there will be no more. I know there's people who are upset because when I scroll over their team, that shows the location. I didn't know that that was even an issue in Atlas. I didn't even think about it because anybody can scroll over. But I'll no longer do live streams <clears throat> like that where you can go in and you know, see things that are going on during our Atlas situations, our wars, PVPs, etc. So the only time you're actually going to see live stream now is if we're doing one of those where you attack me or and I defend or vice versa. So hopefully that's okay with everyone. I feel that it'll be actually better for me because I don't think I do these well. 
I, I don't think I'm meant to do live stream because too many things happen and I don't like controversy. So it's easier for me to just delete. Anyway, so again, very, very sorry about that, guys. All right, so let's go into the post event review of the day for or of the week. I'm sorry, which is the aftermath of the temple raid. And I did a video on this last Tuesday of, you know, ways you guys can prepare yourselves for this particular event. And I know that there's people, even people on my team that didn't watch it. So they were very confused. So I want to go with you not only through the things that happened um, with my team or what I've seen happening on other teams that were like in league with us or whatever, but I also want to go over some of the things that I felt needed to be changed or that needs to be changed, I should say, as soon as possible before it comes back. And then, of course, some things I really loved about the event. So let's go through that first. And by the way, if you guys don't notice that right there, the Temple Raid, that is my newest logo for Temple Raid. I'm actually going through and making all new logos for all of these. All these, all the events, I should say. Anyways, so Temple Raid. Temple Raid came in and it was a very beautiful platform to PvP. Now, I'm just going to talk to you guys about the PvP as my imagery from the last Talk Dragon Tuesday goes cycling through. And then I'm going to point out a few things as we go. Now, number one, a lot of people had trouble keeping track of the fact that those storms do move, move faster than what some teams could actually take islands. And you've got to keep that in mind. If it's near your island, remember, it goes clockwise. <laughs> so you need to attack accordingly. Now, the Shrine of Elements, that was an interesting one. And then, of course, progression. Ooh, that was a lot, that was a lot of work. <laughs> and then last but not least, there was the Temple Guard checkpoints. Now, these Temple Guard checkpoints, um, I didn't know what these were going to look like until the actual event happened, but here it is. Now, these checkpoints, every time we would reach one, it would say a certain percentage. Like when you got checkpoint one, it'd say 25%, checkpoint two, 25 or 50%, then 75%. But it didn't actually count actually attacking the temple guardy guards or whatever you want to call those it would just say 100 percent whenever you get to that island or that 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 temple so that was one big thing i saw that was a big situation the other thing is people attacking other teams like right here you'll see this was you know you would attack other teams to kind of move yourself forward and move them back but remember if they're at checkpoints they can't be taken but i would see us being attacked constantly even when we were on a checkpoint now there is a little thing before you attack another team, it'll say how much you can actually take from them, how much progression. So make sure you pay attention to that. Now, the other thing is I noticed a lot of people weren't noticing or no, a lot of people didn't know the difference between getting VP, which is in your temple part where you'd actually attack the guardians and you would get your PVE. This is where you would actually gain your VP points. So there was a lot of teams that usually do really well in the events as team rank that didn't do so well in this event. So remember, when you go into this next time, keep a lot of these little things in mind. Now, I don't know if they're gonna do some changes. I would guess that they are because, you know, they always bring out an event, look at the statistics and kind of adjust to that. So be sure you check back and make sure that nothing has changed before you jump into your next one. Now, the big key thing here was communicating with your team. And <clears throat> knowing what you guys are all going to work on together the, to get the best VP points. But one of the big things is people thought if it was 100%, it was done. Like it was done. But it doesn't necessarily mean it was done. It wasn't done until it was done. Like it would say unlocked and you could go in and you could actually attack the Guardians itself. So there was a big misconstrue, I think, on my team and possibly other teams that I've seen making way less points than they really should have. Because, I mean, let's be realistic. If you didn't understand the difference between the two, you know, like anything else, it becomes very confusing. Now, we personally actually had a situation where we took the first island, which was the Wind Island, and we got it done, and we couldn't actually attack the Temple Guardians. And it just kept saying, you have to unlock, and it's unlocked. So we'd restart, and we'd restart, and it just wouldn't work. So somebody found something on the forum, and of course, so I sent in a ticket, and they didn't fix it until it was like almost three o'clock in the morning for us. They reset it, but most of the team was in bed. So, and the players was on that night didn't know anything now or like what we should do next. So unfortunately we got messed over out of 
tons of VP points in the very get-go. Now, the three biggest mistakes I've seen happening. Number one, attacking teams on a temple. If they are on the temple and they're attacking the temple guards, then you cannot take any VP points from them, or I'm sorry, PVP points from them. So the progression is they're moving up the map on each little road there, you can attack them and it's gonna pull them back and push you forward, yes. But if they're on the actual temple and they're attacking and you go click on them, it's gonna say you will take zero from them. Don't attack those, attack other teams that are ahead of that so that you can get better progression. I mean, that, that would be my personal opinion. That's at least what I told my team. And of course, there was the issue of people spreading it too thin. There was a lot of players that would send me like screenshots of what they had and you would see like 3% on one, 15 on another, 8% on another, and they're just attacking anywhere and everywhere. Nobody's really hitting any kind of specific islands together. Though the problem with this is if you've got somebody up near where the storm's about to be, and you've got everybody else just going everywhere else, then this becomes a big challenge. So it's better to really focus in on one specific island, I think, and work together to unlock, unlock as you go around. Um, and this way everybody's kind of on the same path and knows which one unlocks and knows which one to go in and do, because otherwise they don't know. And then of course, communicating that too, you know, putting it in a group chat, it's done. Um, we've just finished up ice. You, know, you can literally put the at group for your whole team to see and say, unlocked ice, everybody hit ice. Once it's done, uh, I'm sorry, unlocked ice, everyone hit ice guardians and then put, uh, for example, fire island is next. That's just an example. Now the third, oh, the third big place or big mistake I saw was not paying attention to storm placement. Again, people would send me screenshots. How do you think we're doing? Da, 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 da. Why aren't we unlocking these? There's these issues and I'm noticing that literally the storm, I'm like, okay, well, which one were you on? And they'll say, well, we were hitting ice. And then the storm would be literally past it. And it's like, okay, when did you guys start targeting that one? Because you really got to pay attention. How close is that storm to getting to you? I mean, you really have to look at that storm. So I don't know if there was just a hiccup where a lot of players didn't understand which direction it goes or if it was they didn't understand how long it took or what, what the deal was. So yes, make sure you guys know and your team knows that it's going it's going clockwise. So you remember if the very, very beginning, it started at the very top, which was Earth, and it worked its way down to ice, and then it come down and around to dark, and then it went down and around to, I think the next one was wind, and then fire, and then back to Earth. And that's literally the pattern it took. So make sure your team understands that. And then like if, for example, you just finished one, Look and see where the earth or where the wind or shoot where the um, storm is. It doesn't mean attack the next one. It means pick one that's furthest from that storm. You didn't have to go in a specific order. You could go choose whichever ones you want. You could go over to wind, then over to ice, then up to fire, and then so forth. You didn't have to go clockwise with it, if that makes any sense. I don't know if that was a hold up or what that was on that. Now, five things I really loved about this particular pvp number one of course being able to use old dragons now i don't remember what sh stone she's at i think it's blue but i have like nigeria for example from the very first time i started this game which was like the last day or two of um i think it was like last summer's event so i ended up getting a little bit of nigeria it's up to the blue stone with my husband's help so that was the first time i've used her in a very long time and it actually felt somewhat powerful <laughs> So that was pretty cool being able to use some old dragons. Now, I think the other cool thing about it was the fact that they made an automatic roster for each of the tiers. So you didn't have to go and actually add them to a roster like I thought we were gonna have to do. But whenever you would go to attack that specific guardian, it would actually bring up what dragons you could use. That was pretty cool. Now, one of my favorite parts, as I say all the time, is planning, you know, you know, putting together strategies and so forth. So I think another one was definitely the team coordination aspect of this, being able to coordinate what our ideas were going to be and what we were going to do. And like I even made a small video for my team in our line chat, for example, to tell them what the plan was before it even started. And then, of course, the next thing was the free energy attacks. Like it was pretty cool that when we would go through those, they were zero energy, but they were still getting us points. 
that was a very cool thing to see. And then of course, another part would be the PVP with PVE. The fact that we did have to attack other team teammates, <clears throat> but that you could kind of take a break when you get to each temple and let them do their thing while you would rack up your stuff. So it kind of gave like this break um, between like all the, you know, self attacks against each other. I thought that was very nice. But again, I just wish a lot of people realized that whenever they were in the temple guardians or whatever, like let's say they were at checkpoint two, that whenever they would attack them, it wasn't going to affect the other team's points. Now, maybe they did this on purpose. I don't know. But it doesn't seem likely. So five things I would like to see change in this event. Now, of course, number one, ability to heal the dragons in the den because Whenever you would have a dragon, like when I went up against the gold tier, I needed to level up dragons because they weren't strong enough to win. But I couldn't go in my swap roster and find them. I'm like, I know I've got Crisis, where is he? Well, then I'd realize, oh, dude, no, seriously, I can't even get to him because he's considered, you know, healing right now. So I would go in the den, and of course in the den, you can't access them. So then I would go back into the game and like to re-attack, but not actually attack, I would cancel it and heal them and go out, but then my whole game would reset. Like, you'd be like, sorry, we had a situation with War Dragon, so we have to restart the game, blah, 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 blah. And I come back and they're still not healed. And this happened like five times. I did end up turning it in, but nobody was understanding me, so I just gave up. Now, the second thing I'd like to see is some base HQ reductions, because some of those bases were serious bases with serious amounts of elemental towers, but most of your basic level dragons you know, your basic breedable dragons, even if they were expert, they don't have that type of resist and we can't add it. So, and then some of the spells that I know in the gold tier don't even work. Like Elemental Mayhem, I would, I hadn't used that in years, or no, I shouldn't say years, I hadn't used Elemental Mayhem in months, but I know whenever I clicked on it during those, it literally did not work. I would click Elemental Mayhem. There's no red towers, by the way. I know that I have to get rid of those first. So I take out my red mage, red mage, click Elemental Mayhem, and they're still following and hitting me and not actually turning to one another like they're supposed to. So that's a problem. So either A, we need to fix the spells or something, or which I think would be better, is reduce the HQ of some of these bases because that was just a bit much. And I didn't like the fact, of course, with this being said, that you were having to feed your dragons to get them up to be able to take that base HQ. And we all know that we save these dragons back for feeding events. And it's like, dude, <laughs> that really sucks. Um, the third thing is 100% should be after you completely finish the thing. I wish they would fix the entire percentage wise. So like when we reach the first temple um, checkpoint, before you even take those temple guardians out, you're at 25%. You know, you get to the next one, you're 50%. And it's before you even take any of those temple guards out and so forth. So we had a few players that did, that was like, hey, so let me tell them once we reach 100%. And I'm like, no, because it's not when we reach 100%. It's when we unlock the island is when we we'll move into the next one. And I actually saw where other teams were making this, mis this mistake and actually messaged me. And they're like, hey, I don't understand. Why isn't it unlocking? And it's like, it says we're at 100%. Yeah, if it says 100%, then you're not done. I know it seems like you would be, but you're not. You actually have to have the unlock logo, and then you can go in and do the Temple Guardians. How many other teams actually reached out to me on some of the situations in this particular event? It was crazy. And then, of course, uh, number four, I think we should have an ability as leadership to put a target on whatever island you're working on. Like, you could almost have three targets. You could put a, you know, a green, a yellow, and a red. So green being this is the one we hit first, or you could have a red and then, or numbers. So you have two targets with a number on it, like a red target that says one and a white target that says two. So that your team knows, okay, we're hitting this one first. After we're done with this one, we're going to move up to this one. I think that'd be cool. Or at least just one target. That way the teams know or players know when they come in what the target is. I think a lot of people were confused as to where to even find the team plan. <clears throat> even though we used it, they didn't, I know on my screen that little arrow was so, so tiny, that sliver there, that that's probably why. Now, the system message, I think, should be coming in to players whenever you finally unlock it. Just like whenever we would do tug of war or whatever, if we take an island or someone takes our island or whatever, 
then it should, you know, do what that does and email us and say, your team has completed the ice island. Make sure you go in and defeat the temple guardians. I think that would have been a very nice feature to have in this, but I don't know. I don't know if that would make it different or not. So these are the things I'd like to see change. But I personally, I liked the temple um, raid. I really did. I think it was a really fun, you know, way to play. And I think there was a lot of people that weren't happy with it. But it is really difficult to get into these things. There's a lot of people that, you know, they'll be like, man, the Kingdom Wars, I hated that event. But now I love it. It's, it's actually fun. You can work with alliances and so forth. So just keep your mind open and remember they do adjust these, you know, when they look at the statistics. So we'll see what changes they put out before it comes back again. Fingers crossed that it's one of at least one of those five things. Anyways, so today we will be doing another in day. $20 in-game pack giveaway as usual. Just remember that I myself do not actually give out these um, prizes. They come from War Dragons. But I do do these drawings live right here on my channel. This is not screen streaming recording kind of thing, but I actually record with a camera, me taking and, you know, cutting up the names, putting them in a bowl, and draw them very fair and square for everyone to see. And of course, this last week, we actually had a winner, not only for that, but for a poster giveaway. And that's not going to be a regular thing. It was just something that I thought I would throw out there for fun during the glory hunting phase. Now, because of the tornado warnings and all the storms I've had all day, I'm too exhausted to come up with anything creative. So in order to win this week's contest, all you have to do is go down and put your in-game name. And then, of course, um, later this week, I will do a... Um, drawing. Now, I usually close this down on Thursdays, but it seems like pretty regularly I don't get around to this until Friday. So I'm actually going to start extending this out to Friday mornings. So you have until Friday at about like 8 a.m. in order to get your in-game name submitted, and then I will do the drawing on Friday so that you guys can have it, um, your prize, before the end of the weekend. Again, just go clear to the bottom, scroll all the way down, and go to the comment section, put your in-game name, and we will enter you in. Now, one last thing, I do want to, again, um, give my sincerest apologies to, you know, I almost said Wolf, I'm sorry, Ghost Rider and his team, Yin Yin Warriors, because I'm, I'm really, really, really very, very sorry that, number one, that reached your eyes, because that was not something I wanted anyone to see. And the number two, that somebody had said that that was not something anyone should have said. And it really breaks my heart that it was on my channel. And unfortunately, like I said, I can't control what other people say. And please know that I'm not targeting you guys. I'm not trying to come after you. I'm not looking to make money off of, you know, coming after you. I, I'm not controversial like that. Anything that you might think I have against you, I do not. Absolutely do not. So please know I am extremely sorry. And it has been a very hard last 24 hours trying to figure out what went wrong and what I should have done right. And when I look back, the thing I wish I would have done, to be honest with you, was just in the stream right then and there. And then just go through and once it uploaded, deleted it. That's what I wish I had done. Anyways, guys, that's it for today's video. Um, that's pretty much it. So I will see you guys probably in the next few days with our next video. I have a lot going on, so please be patient with me.